When you practice right mindfulness, you're making a choice. The basic formula tells you, on the one hand, you're following the body in and of itself, and then you're subduing thoughts of greed and distress and have to do with the world. So you're choosing to follow one part of your experience and to subdue another part. And you try to do that consistently. Normally we jump back and forth, focusing on our bodies for a while, then going to the world for a while. But that's not much of a path. It's a very zigzag path. You want to make up your mind that this is a good direction you want to go, and anything that's going to pull you off the path of right mindfulness is something you've got to learn how to discipline. That's the implication of that word that we translate as subduing. Vinaya. It's related to vinaya, the discipline. Discipline is a word we don't like. We tend to think of it as having to do with punishment and harsh regulations. But simply a choice that you're making. You're learning from your past experience that some of your desires are in your best interest and some of your desires are not, no matter how much they may like to dress things up, to lure you, to get you on their side. They're not in your long-term best interest. This, of course, is a part of wisdom. What will, when I do it, will be to my long-term welfare and happiness. Once you've got an answer to that question, you want to stick with it consistently. So if you look at discipline not so much as something imposed on you, but as a choice that you make, having considered where your life is going to go, then it's a lot easier to stick with it. The Buddha talks about there being many paths in the world. There's a path that leads to heaven, there's a path that leads to hell, there's a path that leads to an animal rebirth, a hungry ghost rebirth, a human rebirth. There's a path that leads to nirvana. And for most of us, we jump around from these paths. It's as if we have a little helicopter. Picks us up, puts us in another path, then picks us up, puts us in another path. That helicopter is something we've got to watch out for. Because it requires that we forget about where we really want to head in life and the implications of our choices. We look for the short term. How would it feel to go someplace new, try out something new? On the one hand, this desire to try something new is what got us on this path the path to freedom to begin with. But just because it got us here doesn't mean that we have to follow it wherever it goes. Once we're here, we have to realize this is a good place to be, a good path to be on. So any impulse that would pull you off, you've got to subdue it, you've got to discipline it. The English word discipline has a different meaning from subduing. It means that you're learning. Learning, of course, requires that you dedicate yourself to a particular subject and stick with it. And in this case, it means you have to learn how to deal with your vagrant notions, your vagrant desires, and not feel that you are being punished when you say no to them, when you subdue them. This is why the Buddha has you understand that process of becoming. When the desire comes up, then around it develops a sense of you wanting the desire and you being able to attain the desired result. And then there's the world in which you will do that. And you slip into that world and you go with it. And John Swart calls us the, the traveling places of the mind.
Discipline re requires you to say, no, I don't need to get into those. And I don't have to identify with those desires. This is why the Buddha analyzes things in terms of clinging, craving, all the different steps of dependent core arising. It tries to depersonalize the whole process to realize it's simply a vagrant impulse. It's not you or yours necessarily. You can have the choice to claim it if you want, but why bother? Get good at seeing where these things go. And really listening to that, learning from that. Not just jumping it with any impulse. Because discipline requires that you take the long view. You're willing to say no to some desires because you have a bigger desire. Again, this is where many of us fail to understand discipline. We think we're being hemmed in by other people's desires for us. But you have to realize you have this one desire to find freedom, to find a happiness that doesn't cause harm to anybody, a happiness that's not going to disappoint. And you want to protect that desire. You want to keep choosing that direction. So you have to learn how to talk to yourself. You have to learn different perceptions to hold in mind to remind yourself this is where you want to go. Now, some people say it's narrow, but then the people who refuse to commit to anything in life, where do they go? They just wander around aimlessly, off into the woods on the side of the path. And they may find some interesting things in the woods, but we're not here just to find interesting things or fun things. As the Buddha said, there's only two things that we can expect when we're born, and that's aging and death. We have to prepare for them. And if we don't prepare for them, we're being very short-sighted. So this is the best preparation. The path to something that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. When he talks about people dying, he says even the wealthy have to die. When he talks about arahants, he says, well, they have to lay down their body, or their bodies are subject to being laid down, subject to breaking apart. But the part of the mind that's awakened, that doesn't die. So that's where all this leads. But it doesn't lead there if you have lots of different vagrant notions, things that you haven't learned how to subdue yet. Again, we don't like the word subduing. It sounds like we're being harsh and hemming in our creative impulses. Well, there's room for creativity on the path, but the creativity isn't learning how to be clever in saying no to your defilements. Apply your creative talents there, because they're going to be needed. Your defilements are very clever. They come up with one argument, you say no to that, well, they come up with another one. So be creative in learning how to say no to those things, creative in learning how to subdue greed and distress with reference to the world. And you'll be making a good choice, and you'll be learning how to use your talents in the right way. in the way that's consistent with your ultimate choice, which is the desire to be free.